my Halloween costume from first grade through eighth grade was a football coach. Not <laughs> never a player, a never, coach. never a player. Football coach. <laughs> I dressed up every year, went door to door, headset on, sweater vest on, you name it. I knew exactly what I was going to do. There was no doubt that's what I was going to do. That's legit. Yeah, that's legit. <laughs> We got a very special guest uh, for this one. We've been real excited to bring them on. Uh, our special guest is Mrs. Amber Fish, and then she brought a plus one. Uh, <laughs> coach. And she brought a plus one, Coach Jensen. That's Jensen's good, Noah. That's good. Head football coach at Arizona. Um, obviously, everybody knows Coach Fish as a coach. Uh, everybody knows him as a recruiter and uh, his journey, his journey here as a coach. But really, we want to know where the journey started. So we really want to get to know you as a person. But before we get to do that, we want to know where this journey started. So there's a story in the locker room going around about you being at the University of Florida uh, as a tennis player or a tennis coach, never touched a football in your life, never played football. And there's a story that you put sticky notes or notes on Coach Spurrier's car to let you come coach for him. And then, and then obviously that led to you being coach at the Patriots, coach at the Ravens, and now head coach at the University of Arizona. So can you just touch on that yeah. story a little bit? Yeah. That's there's part of that story is true, Noah. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, you could see Mrs. Fish. I'm a good recruiter, you know. So <laughs> I was able to uh, get you two guys to come be a part of our program. But way before that, I had to recruit Coach Spurrier to allow me to be in his program. And um, I went to my, uh, my stepdad was a head football coach um, when I was growing up. But I was growing up as a tennis player. And um, when I finished my senior year, my dad said to me, he goes, where are you going to go to school? And I said, uh, I'm going to go to University of Florida. And he said, why? And I said, because I'm going to go be a college football coach. And he said, well, that seems like a hard thing to do, uh, considering you didn't grow up playing football. And, you know, you just got done playing in a state championship tennis tournament at, uh, in New Jersey. And um, I said, well, yeah, that's just what we're going to do. And I'm going to figure out a way to get there. And uh, he said, well, good luck. You know, I don't know how that's going to happen. So I wound up getting there. and. Um, wasn't as easy as I thought, you know, I wound up, uh, I applied to be an equipment manager. I didn't get that job. I tried to be a student assistant. They didn't have that job. So I said, well, I know where coach Burrier parks. So let me start with just leaving my resume, which didn't have anything on it, but <laughs> why not? You know, I left a resume that had like lifeguard and you know, some other things that I was doing and, uh, that didn't work. And then the next day I went back and I wrote a note on why, you know, and I've been involved in football my whole life. I mean, I watch more film with my stepdad every night, you know, in my living room, every football camp you could ever go to. But I was just playing competitive tennis every day. So I kind of tried to explain my story day after day because I got no response. So I just said, you know what, I'll just leave a note. Maybe it's a sticky note. Maybe it's a note. Maybe it's a reason. And uh, finally, after about a year and a couple months, I got a call saying he'll see me wow. and I uh, got in there and told that same story to him and he kind of let me hang around and next thing you know I got to become a GA and then got in the NFL two years later and so I two guess, years yeah I guess preparation met opportunity I got lucky or something like that Whoa, can you imagine time. now in this day and age if somebody just left a note on his car Every day. <laughs> Stalk, stalker. Stalker. Might call the police. I left a note on her car, too, in order to get her to take me out to go on a date, too. I, I had to go both ways with it. I the other day, and I was like, oh, that'd be really funny. I should leave a note on your car. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. That was the move, right? I got the job, and I got the wife. It worked out perfect. No more notes. Send recruits. I sent you guys a lot of notes. So it's still working. No, seriously, seriously. So, so in comparison, you said you were a GA for two years? Yeah. If you had to compare yourself, who would you who would you be like right now? DJ. None of our GAs. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, no, some of them. Um, I was probably more like a uh, Van Horn. Okay. Than I was oh, like a Van Horn is always working. Yeah. 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 Um, I got a shout out to McNitt too. McNitt's a McNitt, man. McNitt is a grinder, man. He's an absolute grinder. No, all of our guys do an awesome job. Yeah. All those guys. I mean, DG has unbelievable. Uh, work ethic and knowledge of what we're trying to get done. Um, I think that McNitt is awesome. Duran was my guy. Duran was my GA at three different places. We lost him to the Vikings. Um, Blitz is your guy too, right? Blitz was my GA at Michigan. We got him here now, which is awesome. Yeah. 
DA played for me, trying to teach him how to be a good GA. And then on the defensive side, man, those guys are awesome with Bea and Teddy and Van Horn and Ty and now Brett. So we've got a great young group, man. But I spent nine years being a GA, an analyst, a QC, an assistant receiver coach. You know, my first job was in 08 as the wide receiver coach at the Denver Broncos when it was my own position room. And I got thrown into a room. You know who the receivers were? Brandon Marshall, Eddie Royal as a rookie, Brandon Stokely, and Daryl Jackson. My first job as a wide receiver coach, and those are the four dudes I had. Oh, that's and three of them, two of them went to the Pro Bowl that year, so it was pretty cool. Whoa, that's, tight. that's you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's them. I happen it's to be them. There. Yeah, yeah. Just having to I'm be there. The help them, I hope. Yeah. Yes, sir. Nah, but um, you really pissed me off, Coach, because you never touched a football in your life, and you don't <laughs> you don't know the struggles we go through. Man. You don't know the struggles we go through, but but no, like I mean we. We just, we just got here with you, uh, win first and all that. And man, I just heard that you you never touched a football a tennis player. I'm like, oh, I'm like, he don't know. He don't know the struggles oh, that we go knows. through. No, you know? No, so even you don't know. So uh, it's a different deal, you know, when you get into it and you get into an opportunity where it's, where you're, you know, you're training in one sport, right? You know, and you should go out there and try to play three, four hours of tennis. I'm sure that'd be good. Oh, no, I'm good. And, uh, you know, and the, the sport's a different sport, you know, and the activity's different. But when it comes down to, you know, getting players better, yeah. you know, that's yeah. the whole key and how you're going to be able to find guys to get to with the next level and, you know, to be able to work with guys and the amount of good players that I've gotten to coach. Uh, you know, you just start learning ways to get to them and teach them you know, ways to get them better. And your job as a pro coach is to make guys money. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, that's your job, right? So whether it was back in 06 coaching Steve McNair and, you know, it was just in the Pro Bowl or yeah. then the next year, you know, we wound up having a streak of like seven straight years of coaching position groups in the Pro Bowl and getting new contracts. Yeah. You know, you start finding ways to see how hard can you challenge guys and how willing are you to, you know, you got to be honest though. You let them know, you know, straight from the beginning, you know, like I haven't had, I've never been asked to do what I'm asking you to do, but what I'm asking you to do will help you go become the best. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where the challenge comes. Yeah. So why football though? Why football? I heard you were a little, just a little all-star tennis player. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it didn't, you know, coaching tennis doesn't pay as well, T Mac. No, I'm just kidding. Nah, you're not lying. <laughs> nah, I'm you're just not kidding. Lying. Um, no, what, the truth is, literally, since I was, I mean, I couldn't have been any, you know, I would guess it was like 1986. So I was 10. And um, my mom and my stepdad, and we were um, playing, uh, you know, he was like, hey, come to the practice, you know, come to practice. Mm -hmm. and, I would start going out there and there's like, you know, come watch, you know, hey, you know, we're having a staff meeting in my house and, you know, high school football back in the day, yeah. you know, there was no big staff meetings. Yeah. It was at your parents' living room. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there in the living room or in the, you know, the film room, which is also the living room. And, you know, hey, Jed, just go change the tape, change the tape, you know, and you just keep learning and listening and listening and you become addicted to the sport. Right. And uh, it just got to a point where, you know, tennis was great and I love playing it, but it's not what I wanted to do for a living. I wanted yeah. to coach football and um, it worked out pretty good. You knew that though, you knew that all along. I knew it from the very beginning wow. that I was gonna That's do crazy. that since I was 10 years old. My Halloween costume from first grade through eighth grade was a football coach. Fo not <laughs> never a player, a never, never a player. Football coach. <laughs> I dressed up every year. Went door to door, headset on, sweater vest on, you name it. I knew exactly what I was gonna do. There was no doubt that's what I was gonna do. That's legit. Yeah, that's legit. That, but man, well, um, Miss Amber Fish, uh, what are these boots you got on? They're just what? sneakers. Sneakers. <laughs> what are these boots you got on? I, I, I don't know. They, there's a big sneaker. <laughs> it's a big sneaker. I know. I know. I mean, I'm a big personality. Those brand yeah, new? that's true. What are these amber fish? Yeah, what, what are, these yeah, what are they? they? Cause you seen them They're yet? <laughs> no, I haven't seen these. <laughs> Who makes Next. these? Next. Yeah, I mean, I, I, Who I'm makes not. these? Thirty-seven. <laughs> what? Oh, what? Yeah. Wait, wait. That's, that's like the, that's it? like the thirty-seventh pair made or thirty-seventh pair in their closet. Oh, huh? Oh, wait, what? Yeah. What? Size thirty-seven. Oh, those are Balenciaga. So do huh? a, are you saying I should do like a? 
vlog or something? Oh, yeah, well, Mrs. Fist. We're, as you get to know Mrs. Fist, yeah, you, you know she's a, she. She has some fashion. She has some swag. Yeah. So. Well, I thought you liked the aloe jacket. Yeah, I did. I did. Legit. I did actually. Yeah. I Every did. Every time like I it. wear something, you guys comment. You always got stuff. Yeah, that's your little hat well, that you wear. Where do you be shopping? <laughs> <laughs> Tucson, they have a lot of stuff at the mall. Oh, the so mall. the mall. Wait, which yeah. mall? You, you go to the mall, mall now. You, you don't shop online. Don't believe that. <laughs> online. Okay. That's what I figured. That's what I figured. I'm guessing it's coming out of your pockets. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's out oh. of That's why I'm coaching football, not casually, <laughs> Matt. Hey, man. Not, not argue with that, but uh, talk, talk to us about fashion. How'd you get into it? What do you like? Well, I don't have much fashion. I mean, I actually have help. Like, one oh, of our, well, not help, help, but one of our coach's wives, actually, she's our baseball coach's wife, Judy Hale. She actually is a stylist. So oh, she okay. comes over and she puts stuff in my closet together. Oh, yeah. okay. She's I real sweet. Yeah. You Do you at least know who Jody is? White. What's her name? Jody, right? No. Oh, my bad. Damn. Julie. 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 Right? Mrs. Hale. Mrs. Hale. <laughs> Mrs. Hale. Mrs. Hale. Hale. She you comes over, but like I would wear a white t-shirt or a black t-shirt and jeans every day. So she just styles different things in my closet and says, oh, you might need this or you might need that to add on to it. So Ain't, there, ain't nothing yeah. wrong with black t-shirts yeah. and white t-shirts. I know. I know. White t-shirt Look, on. No, every day. Wrong with that. Basic. Every day. Basic. I mean, yeah. then you add a little, a little coat. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's just so, so basically while I'm here, you don't pick your outfit? Do you pick your own outfit though? No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Do, do you I just mean, every day up? when I wake up, I put on workout clothes because I work out every day. Then throughout the day, then I figure out if I'm going to change or not. And if I have events like just come see you guys or things Pull, like this. Pulling up in your I'll Range change. Rover. I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, he works Rover. hard. I mean, there's a lot. Like, but think about it, guys. He's always with oh, yeah. you, right? It's yeah. a lot. Being a head coach is a lot. Like, there's a lot of sacrifices. Oh, yeah. For the kids, it's for not. our kids, for me. So. No, and we definitely appreciate those sacrifices. Yeah. But how about this? I know, I know being a coach's wife is definitely hard as well. Yeah. Especially his wife. <laughs> What's that supposed to be? I don't know. Right? I just said <laughs> it. For, <laughs> I just said it for fun, just to throw it out there. So there's so. Lot, it's it's so awesome, but there's a lot of sacrifices. Yes, and in the pros, it's very different. Like we weren't a head coach in the pros, but um, we were in the pros for a long time. So in college, being a head coach's wife is really different. Cause, mm. but we are my investment in you guys, and we love like the recruitment part. You know, yes, like. Ma'am. All of that, because I feel like you're all our little kids. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, Especially you, bro. Oh. oh. <laughs> so, even like your Birthday family. cookies for you. I know. Yeah. Thank you for that. Actually, come with cookies. It's cheesecake. Both. Oh, what about you the couple cookies? Well, you yeah, I got that, but then I was like, oh, I was told nah, that you I like cheesecake, so I went. I do actually. I do like cheesecake, but thank you for both of those. That little stuff means stuff to me. I like giving you guys stuff and seeing That's you awesome. happy and. Because you're away from your parents, you're away from your family. Yeah, like, that's Where's true. your family here? That's okay. So whatever we can do, like. This oh, is your first rodeo. Hold on, hold on. Don't, don't be mad when I pull up to you guys' doorstep and need a place to stay. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. You need Easter candy. Got Easter candy. Okay. You know. Okay. You know. So so if you weren't Coach Fish's wife, what what would you be doing? So I actually had a job before Coach Fish. Okay. When he was stalking me. I was a meeting planner. Hey, I, hey, hey, hey. I, don't, I a, don't hate on it. He's a hardworking <laughs> man. He's a hard... That's right. I I'm, see you, coach. Thanks. Ask him if he left letters in mind. He drove three hours to Dallas. Whoa. So oh, good. I did hard meeting worker. planning. Yeah. Hey, man. I met her in a, at a meeting. She was planning. At the American Football like Coaches that. Association. Oh, oh she yeah. planned meetings. Ooh. Yeah. Itineraries. Yes. Setups, all Big that stuff. Big city-wide. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought Jed was an agent, actually. He was with Coach Spurrier, Bob Stoop, like a big group of coaches. I was coaches. Our GA. Yeah, he was a GA oh, Florida. Nice. And yeah. I was like, oh, he's cute. He must <laughs> be a sports agent. Handsome. Like, Stop. <laughs> yeah. Handsome guy. Yes. Back in the day. Back in the day. You still got it, Coach. So uh, yeah, no, that's what I did no for a living, meeting planning until Miami. And then we just, with kids and moving and new jobs, it was just hard to juggle everything. Okay. So. My job now is I, I'm the CEO of our fish family. The no, CEO of you're not, yeah, you're the, really the star of the fish family, if I'm gonna be honest with oh, you. Yeah. Thank wow. you. you <laughs> Face stays on the football, Miss Fish. Yeah. Oh, you guys are too good. You're so sweet. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's Kendall okay. and Ashley, she likes us, though. Here. Oh, no, 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 they're, they're coming up for sure. They're coming up for sure. I mean, I had one of them all. I know. <laughs> Carried one in. It's all That's good, right. though. It's all good. Last weekend. Now, so, Miss Fish, another question we got for you. Everybody knows Coach on the field. What is he like at home? What is he like off the field? Wow, so he's not home a lot, but when he's home, he's, um, 
He's awesome. He's great. He. We have two dogs. We have two girls. You know that. Um, we have three daughters actually. One's uh, 23, so she's not at home. But the little ones, he mm. does homework with them. He watches shows. Grey's Anatomy is his favorite show with Ashley. <laughs> but he's involved in everything. Last night he was doing homework with Kendall. Um, I make him clean up his mess. He comes in and shoes are everywhere. And I just oh. go he picks everything up. He's, he's like a normal dad being home. He has rules mm. at home. He has to do certain things. And he actually this weekend, I, I'll brag on you because I usually don't. Yeah. But <laughs> he, he's like, I'll cook dinner. Because you're going to always put it, you're going to have to clean up anyways. And I was like, okay, great. So he grilled, cooked dinner for, and the girls ha both had a friend. So it was five girls at the house and him. Uh, okay. So he made all of our dinner, and then I sat on the couch, and he cleaned the entire dinner. Oh. So he does. Father of the year. Brownie you, points. You need to teach You'll learn from this. You need You'll to teach learn. my dad There's a, a lot something. of great learn things. Learn from some <laughs> of these things here, guys. Learn from I some of you. these things. There's a lot of great things. I mean, he makes me crazy sometimes. We all know that, but he you does. Make them crazy too. Sometimes. Right? We all you know that. That's you don't what I said. But you're. <laughs> not only. But that. that's what he's like. Not when only you guys that. are drafted in three years from now, and you guys, on what day is tomorrow? Draft day. Yeah, in three years, four years from now, when it's that anniversary of the draft day from this from this podcast, you'll be saying, "Making me crazy was worth it." Yeah. We know yeah. that. We know. We'll be bragging it. about you. <laughs> I don't know. Not about, not about grilling, but we're grabbing yeah, yeah, no, about no. something else. Not only a great coach, but a great father, great husband. Great cook. I see you. Great cook. Okay, cook. Average. Average. Okay. Average. Average. <laughs> okay. Average. Okay. Average cook. After Saturday, and right. I'm going to say the no, grilling is, uh, yeah. But, but well, you guys will be over soon. June. June is our big month. You guys will be. Uh, pool parties Yeah, well, back. Pool, well, pool parties are back by position group. So we'll have you, so we do always DBs, receivers. Quarterbacks, linebackers, running backs, and then O-line, D-line. Every Wednesday night, we rotate. So you guys will be back for that barbecue. Don't worry, I'll have I a won't catered. Be going. I'll have a catered. <laughs> and then uh, we got recruits coming in, man. We got yeah. a busy month. So you guys got a couple weeks off, and that's it. And then it's go time. Man, that's crazy. It's a, year ago, a year ago, we were the recruits. Yes. We haven't been to your house since, uh, since for a year. No. Oh, dang. We haven't been to your house for a sure. year. I forgot about that. Actually. Man. We're in June. Let's see, I've got some new bar stools, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else is the same, guys. Everything else is the same. You can come anytime. We appreciate it. Wait, I think I have a new dog. Did I have? Oh. <laughs> no, they know. Yeah, we you know, no, I, no, I didn't. You didn't. You I didn't, didn't even know you had, had a dog. Two dogs. I have Callie, and then I have Zona now. She's a cavapoo. Zona, that's all. Zona. Callie. What is that? What's a cavapoo? It's a cavalier and a poodle. Oh, what's it? Oh, okay. A cavalier. cavalier. It's like our old dog. Yeah. I don't remember your guy's old dog. Well, yeah. it's because I had to get rid of it because your mom's afraid of dogs. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Don't, don't give her no, don't give her no uh, that's special oh my God. I had yeah, no, no special treatments for her no Spam more. Spamming eggs, dog. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. You're, you got us here. That was now, when so. we were recruiting you. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two dogs. Yes. Two little dogs. But they and don't then, you have another daughter? Yeah, Zaylee. Yeah, I didn't know that. She's, She's 23. 23. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, she never was here when we were at Michigan. Oh, she went here? Yeah. How a. about that? Mm. How crazy is that story? Yeah. Whoa. She chose U of A in 2015 when we were coaching at Michigan. So she came. Did you try to get her to go to Michigan? No. No. Oh. No, Arizona was a good spot for her. So she's still here. She's still around. She oh, really? To go, she wanted to go warmer yeah. anyway. She wanted to go. It's too cold. Yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of which, I mean, you guys traveled all around the world pretty much. Especially Explain. <laughs> She's traveling. Yeah, she does. She does. <laughs> California, back. Yeah. yeah. That's a good California. But explain to us, like, how, like, what, what's the best place that you guys were? Or Tucson. Like, yeah. Like it? Love it. You just like the warm weather. What is it? I think for me, it's waking up and looking at the mountains, and oh. then have the blue skies and the stars at night, and how clear it is. Now, That's true. I mean, we loved. I love living in LA. So did Amber because we were right at the ocean. Yeah. Okay. But I think the fact what Tucson brings with the mountains, the sun, the stars, the blue sky, every day you know you're getting a beautiful it's a day. day. That's true. Like, it's yeah, like, that is true. I mean, it affects you, your mood. It's, you can't it's be. You're always happy. And other it's than those two sky. or three months, it's always nice. Yeah. When we yeah. first got here, I like I love yeah. the weather. Yeah. Oh, I know, it was amazing. Never get rain. Get rain it's like amazing. once or twice. Yeah. Monsoon in June. That's what I heard. Those monsoons. Monsoon season. Yeah. They go cut and go quick. Really? Yeah, it's about to be triple digit weather. Oh, yeah, it'll be nice and hot yeah. for you in June oh, and yeah. July. It'll nice be in the indoor hot. 
be an indoor, indoor. Yeah, indoor, yeah, I like that. Weight room? I like that. Weight room. <laughs> outdoor for practice. Huh? We gotta be the best oh, condition yeah. program. Yeah, you're right. You gotta you're make right. them you're isolated right. in the desert, huh? You're right. Yes. Make them feel lonely. That's the whole idea, right? <laughs> I feel that. Make them feel lonely you're in the right. desert, right. man. You're right. you're right. Look around for water and like you can't find any. Look around yeah. for help, there isn't any. Okay. Right? 55,000 screaming. There you go. Okay. We gotta start making it. We need you know what I found out today? 2,000 new season ticket holders since two months ago. Oh. I have never owned season tickets Whoa, here. Never. 2, oh, okay. new. 2,000 new on top of what we've had, but 2,000 new. And we want to get another 2,000. Yeah, no, we want to get more hear than that, that, fellas. More than yeah. that. Maybe we more. Want five I want to get five, five. total yeah. of new, and then we have right. our own. Tucson our community, we need y'all. Shout out Miss Mary Hartman, season ticket holder. She in there. Is that the one you call? Oh, huh? Mary. Oh, right. Oh, where? <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> my bad. She a season ticket. My bad. My bad, Miss Mary. My bad. Shout out to Crest Insurance who bought Crest. a ton of tickets for us. Oh, shout okay. out Crest Insurance. Crest Insurance, man. Want to say the line one more time? <laughs> I got you. For your home, auto, and business, make sure you turn to the team at Crest Insurance. Yes, sir.